Greetings and felicitations. Okay, the first round. Boom. <laughs> and oh, geez, that was boom. just unnecessary. You can't, you can't be out of range. Things that should have been taken care of in advance. There it is. Here we go. Greetings and felicitations. Okay, so I'm just kind of getting a look at things now. I have this new uh, new theme set up. Boom, there it is. It even has a little little reminder there to go find my Ko-Fi. Uh, it, it wasn't a mute problem. It was the, uh, the new the new theme apparently it, it needed me to reset all of my sound balance settings and everything at the same time yeah i know i know uh that's why i was doing the thing <laughs> as soon as i saw it i was like i this isn't working but we're working now and i am a peasant that's right I've, i'm here let me, let me roll this back here i've been been working on this on and off today pretty excited about it i just uh this is this is a base layer. There's gonna be some uh, some some trousers, some leggings coming along to go with this. Another tunic, just so I have you know multiple tunics to wear. Because having only one costume to wear in you know September heat, <laughs> I've also got. Hold on, hold on. Uh, I, I know I made a video about this, but I do I do need to show this off. I did manage to get kablam right here that's uh i know it's backwards it says burial it says burial for a reason this is gonna be my scent burial oil <laughs> i'm going to smell like a dirty peasant and i'm going to look like a dirty peasant the other thing i'm going to do is i'm going to get makeup to, to make it look like i've uh, like i'm a pox survivor <laughs> gruesome in every way so let me go ahead and get ah there's the game noise Let's just see who's online. Let's just dive on into something. Actually, you know what? How about this? Let's do a replay. I had some replays submitted on my server earlier today uh, and the day before. We've got Death versus Wipeout, and we've got Air Runner versus Topher. Mmm. Hmm. Which way are we feeling? Oh, where's my. I don't have my chat overlay. Apparently, changing my theme means I can't have my freaking chat overlay either. One second will I fix that. Game overlay. Da, da, da. Show chat, yes. Just. Hotkey settings. Got it, got it. Hotkeys. Toggle. In game overlay. Eh. Done. And that should fix it so that. There, I can now see my chat. Perfect. Hello, wipe. Well, since... Oh, and I also have Johnny Rico here. Nikos, greetings to you. Glad to see it. And and thank you. Thank you, Medica Octavia, for your for your praise on, on the kit. I'm quite proud of this, like, uh, chain and rope thing I've got going on. You say Air Runner versus Topher, but I'm not biased or anything. Uh, did you win? Let's see that. Let's see. Let's see if you won, Topher. This should be amusing. So we've got Topher's playing as Ithaca, and we've got Air Runner playing as Paris on the Rotting Forest. God, this map is a nightmare. Ugh. I I never use this. I've played it once, and I just watched units that were fleeing just clip through these cliffs and then regroup. And then there were, like, units standing up here. And then units down here that were chasing them were just like, I'm going to... I'll show you. They were like running this way, running this way, running this way. They'd go inside the rock and then boop, they're up here. Running, 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 running. And then I guess, I don't know, they teleported up the tree or some nonsense. It was, this map is goofy and has some serious pathing issues. So, here we go. So, let's go over Topher's army first. He's brought a Cyclops. Good. Good lad. You saw the thumbnail for the video. I brought the Cyclops banner for a reason. We've got... Oh, I've got to turn off the, uh, the foliage here. Boom. There we go. Let's see. What is this? A pair of regular ambushers. A sirens. Okay, you brought the full 
uh, Ithaca mythical roster for Truth Behind the Myth Mode. A pair of Spear Runners, yes. This is going to be four Warriors of Ithaca and three Heavy Sword Skirmishers. And your hero is a Fighter Ravager. The Fighter Ravager seems to be the new the new favorite for everybody. At least it has been the past, you know, um, two, three months now. Uh, Paris, let's see what let's see what Aaron Runner got himself up to. It looks like a mixed medium and heavy spear line. So four heavy Trojan spearmen, three shielded spearmen. He's put everybody in charger mode. All of them ha are are turtle mode. They all have their shields on their backs. And then why not? Your opponent's all the way across the map. Um, might as well have your shields on your back so you can get the extra movement speed. But when you're playing against Ithaca, everybody. Everybody has a javelin, so you might want those shields in front of you. Three Phrygian warriors. The things to know about these light infantry back here is that they not only do they have two-handed axes, they also cause fear. Never forget this about Phrygian warriors. They're some of my favorite units. And then he brought three archers. Bleh. Three archers and one Trojan noble with another fight, and it's a fighter vanquisher. So he's brought the duelist hero. He's hoping to lock down the fighter ravager hero, but it's a toss-up who actually wins that. Okay. Is this the pull-through battle? Uh, I don't think it is. It could be. Um, as I understand it, it was just pull-out. And pull-out is totally illegal. Like, you have to be able to do something. So, look at, like, the formations on this map. It's made it so that there's very few avenues to advance from. Now, this is actually favorable terrain for both Paris and Ithaca, I'd say. Ithaca, because it affords a lot of opportunities to perform some ambushes in the, in the rotting woods. And... Uh, positions to outflank from. Paris likes this map because he has a lot of rocky outcroppings to help protect his archer core, right? So this is going to be fun. Wipe is taking credit for popularizing the uh, the Avenger hero. Interesting. The uh, the Ravager, you mean? Yeah, maybe. Okay, so we've got the Fighter Vanquisher is really out ahead here, and I think the, if Topher's smart with the Cyclops, just go for it. I mean, no hero is going to be able to fight the Cyclops. Oh, he was baiting it. Oh, and he canceled it. He was about to chuck a boulder, but Air Runner saw it coming, and he started dodging around. He really just should just get his um, Cyclops in there to charge. But there are archers around. The Cyclops could take some unnecessary damage. Oh, we did get a boulder chuck. Missed. Yeah. Don't need it. Is this laggy? Is it really? It shouldn't be. It really shouldn't be. You're seeing lag? <gasps> Oh, that's heartbreaking, because I am in performance mode. There shouldn't be any lag. Airrunner is out here with the Fighter Vanquisher, really trying to bait the Cyclops into getting into range of the uh, the Skirmishers. You choose the Ravager out of Discovery. What do you mean? I am in performance mode. It is. I just, I just verified. We are in performance mode. So, kind of heartbreaking for me. I'm not going to lie. It, hold on, I'm going to watch it on my phone real quick. Let's just see how bad it is. It looks fine on my phone. Oh, yeah. No, there is a little bit of choppiness. Ick. Ick. Oh, I hate that. Hold on. Let me let me pause it real quick. I'm curious to see if this will fix things. Give me a second. Um, I'm just going to go... hear me now you can hear me does that make sense that should be better so yeah i think i think it was just i think it was just it might have been the new theme hopefully it wasn't let's just see what happens i'm just kind of watching my uh my phone no more lag huh interesting
Okay, let's just give it a shot and see what happens. I'm going to dive on in now. So we do have the Cyclops out here. That, that Fighter Vanquisher here is really out in front. He can see the Heavy Sword Skirmishers. He has no idea about the Ambushers here or the uh, the Warriors of Ithaca or even the Spear Runners. He knows there's a Fighter Ravager out there. But now he's no, he's not hidden because the Cyclops is pursuing. Yeah, yeah, this is perfect ground for the Cyclops to chase the hero. Like, I don't know what Air Runner is thinking with the, putting that hero that far up there. Maybe he's just scouting. But, yeah. Oh, we, he's going for a point blade boulder. That's going to miss because he's already moved. Oh! Interesting. He was trying to predict where he was going, I think. And he was going to try and throw it ahead of him. Very interesting. Yeah, so I won't be using that new theme then. Gosh, that's disappointing i wanted to update the look on my channel before i did my 1000 subscriber stream i hadn't forgotten i really did want to do that okay come on so we've got a cyclops hiding in the trees he knows the cyclops is there we've got the ambushers still out here let's speed things up see what uh air runner is doing because it looks like it looks like topher's the waiting for air runner to get in position moves. oh they found the warriors of ithaca what saw him that's like really far away that was a very, very good spotting range on that. I'm surprised. Archers are uselessly shooting the heavy sword skirmishers, I would say. I mean, yeah, it looks like they're getting a little bit of damage in, but they're just heavy sword skirmishers. And they also have shields. Their their shield block chance is not the best. It should be like, four, yeah, 40%. I mean, it's better than I thought. I thought it was going to be 35. Anyway, so those archers are just going to go ahead and, and try to catch a little bit of value, shoot at some heavy sword skirmishers. I mean, why not? Go for it. I thought I heard a boulder. Oh, yeah, it crashed right into some shielded spear warriors. I think the heavy Trojan spears would have been a better bet. I mean, that's still that's still a lot of dead, uh, a lot of dead, um, look at the, there's the crater. There, there were bodies littered over here a second ago, but you can't see them for all the, you know, all the tall grass. Falling back towards the trees of the heavy sword skirmishers, eh, eh, I mean, who are you attacking with? So, I mean, if Air Runner was, you know, as... As I understand it, if he was complaining about um, somebody doing illegal uh, maneuvering, he's doing illegal maneuvering right now by not having somebody attacking. So, like, he, I don't think he has a leg to stand on to complain about pull-through when, as I understand it, it wasn't even pull-through anyway. So, you, you have to be maneuvering towards your opponent or attacking if you're in competitive play. But this is a for-fun game anyway. This isn't like a tournament. I know people like to play with tournament rules so so that you're prepared. I mean, right on top of the Cyclops here. And, yeah, no charge from the Cyclops. That would have been beneficial. Those spears will give him a nightmare. And the Cyclops realized, oh, he just got a face full of javelins from heavy sword skirmishers. And that actually staggered him. Oh, man. Friendly fire. You hate to see it, right? And now these guys are falling back. Shield's still on their backs, though. So they're actually getting, like, 5% block chance. People are saying that they really miss this game. They can't wait to get back into it with Mythos. It's it's fun, guys. It looks really good. The Trojan Nobles, they're already opening fire now on the Heavy Sword Skirmishers. They're definitely going to get some damage done. Those Sword Skirmishers, they can't really survive Trojan Noble Archer fire, I'd say. Some point-blank archers um, overshooting the Sword Skirmishers to go for the Warriors of Ithaca. That's a much better target. And they put their shields in their hands. They're going to charge on into the heavy sword skirmishers. They're going to be supported by Warriors of Ithaca. And here comes the rest of Ithaca's infantry. They're going to come on up here. They're going to sweep around to the side. But Air Runners, like I said, what did I say earlier about using the terrain to his advantage? He's going to try and make sure he gets his archers, his good archers protected. But Topher's going to charge on in here with the Cyclops anyway. Go straight for the Trojan Nobles. He's really surrounded. This is not a good place for the Cyclops to be um, completely just pummeled in here by multiple spear units. He's trying to fall back. He's trying to get out of here, but, like, uh, that was already a wasted charge. He's lost a lot of health on the Cyclops for that maneuver. And we still have all these Phrygian Warriors in reserve. They'd be an interesting matchup for the Spear Runners. Um, this unit of Phrygian Warriors is doomed, though. It's just going to get peeled apart by the Warriors of Ithaca. Um, and honestly, I think they can ignore it if they just charge on in here with their spear runners. But the spear runners, they lose their charge. These guys are going to get outflanked by Warriors of Ithaca. That's a dead Phrygian warrior. Absolutely removed from this battle. The Cyclops is now going after um, Air Runner's Fighter Vanquisher hero. Look at that. Heavy Sword Skirmisher is completely out. This Warrior of Ithaca is completely out. 
big hit on that unit. This is a cluster of Paris units. I'd be more interested in keeping the Cyclops in a protected position, maybe back here, and just chucking boulders. I'd be chucking boulders into all this. And, oh, the Trojan Nobles have been, have been enraged by the Sirens, so they now have to shoot the Sirens. Uh, oh, but that's already over, so they're already back into firing in on the Heavy Sword Skirmishers. There is a bug. Where's the bug? Because, I mean, there's been... This is a buggy map. It might be people going to the, uh, to the cliff face. Or is the replay bugged and things are happening differently already? But look at this. Frigid Warriors chasing out that warrior of Ithaca. For shame. For shame. This regrouped heavy sword skirmisher just got uphill and is going to, um, go into this archer here. But with, the uh, Phrygian Warrior at their back, the archers are actually going to perform just fine. They'll beat that heavy sword skirmisher. And there you have it. An archer and a light infantry defeating a heavy infantry. Trojan Prince got taunted, but they didn't move. They don't have to move if they can attack. Um, because the the ranged units, skirmish units, I should say, they all they all they will try to do is just shoot their target. Um, presumably, they had been shooting the sirens at, before the end of their their berserk went out. They don't they don't melee charge. They they charge into attack range. It's basically as if they. Um, uh, the the sirens lure and truth behind the myth mode. The way it works is that it forces a um, an attack order, and that means if you're a melee unit, it's going to be a charge, and if you're a ranged unit, it's going to be a ranged attack. And boulder, man, that cyclops cleaned up the Trojan nobles, throws a boulder into the Phrygian warriors, but not quite good enough. There's a, the sirens are way out here, way out of position. They're, they've met the terrifying Phrygian Warriors. The Sirens themselves, they don't cause fear, so they should be terrified of these, uh, of these axed light-armored infantry. And, yeah, they're just, they're, yeah, there's nothing left of them. I think they're already gone. Yeah, they're already gone. All of them. Goodbye, Sirens. Goodbye, Sirens. I've noticed, though, that in other battles that there have been some very glitched, uh, glitched out Sirens lure effects. It's, it's weird. Sometimes they're great, sometimes they're phenomenal, and sometimes they just kind of fall apart on you. Alright, so looking, you know, doing some inventory here, I think these ambushers are very important. And those archers are trying to kill them. That, oh, and they're regrouped Paris units over here, too. So, wow, look at this, the ambushers going into melee because they've used all of their javelins, charging... The Phrygian Warriors breaking them. No, no, they're still here. Breaking the Shielded Spear Warriors, though. And they're being supported by these ambushers as well. They just got routed by the archers that have regrouped. And I think that's... Yeah, those ambushers are broken. Both ambushers are out. The Cyclops might be the biggest threat. Double Aristea! They both threw down at the same time. The one hero activated the Terrify, but the other one got the Divine Challenge off. Oh, man. This is going to come down to the heroes, isn't it? I think the Fighter Vanquisher has the edge. The fighter Vanquisher is going to beat the Fighter Ravager, which is the more tired of the two heroes. And that's going to rout um, Ithaca's hero. The, uh, that Cyclops is going to be very important here in a couple of minutes. Where's the Cyclops going? Is he... He's charging... It looks like he's charging after the Heavy Trojan Spearmen that were engaged with this warrior of Ithaca here. Meanwhile, the double Aristea duel is going on. He activates the Berserk on his Cyclops, so just to make sure he doesn't rout... But he's got to clean up these, um, these archers that, no, yeah, the archers that are in here, the heavy charged spearmen that are in here. He's got support from spear runners charging uphill into this. Oh my goodness, shield spear warrior is routing. That ambusher has regrouped, but it's been caught by shield spear warrior. We still, that was the last volley of the archers trying to remove the heavy sword skirmishers, but they didn't rout. Yes, they did actually. They just broke. Holy cow, this is down to the wire. That Fighter Vanquisher is taking a lot of damage fighting this Fighter Ravager. But I think he's still going to kill the Ravager. I think that's. I think this is over here in a second. And I think the whole... Oh, yeah. There it is. A decapitation. Paris wins it. And Paris is going to win the whole battle. There goes the Cyclops. The Berserk ended. Done deal. A valiant defeat for Topher. Air Runner is the winner. That was a strange one. That was a strange one. It is confirmed that missiles will melee sirens. Oh! I've never seen that before. Thank you, Rico. That's interesting. 
Um, the most the most amusing uh, Sirens lure I've ever seen was in the my recent Minor Settlement Battle video that I put up, where I, I did the Sirens lure on a Dardanian Charger, and the Dardanian Charger did a 180, ran the complete opposite direction, and they all put themselves in timeout against the wall in a line. They just face-planted into the wall. Why? Who knows? Who knows? All right, let's see. Uh, let's see if there's any lobby set up. Oh, we got a couple of rooms going. They're they're full. Five thousand funds game, really? Small funds, big brains. <laughs> all right, all right. Why not? Why not? Why not? Let's uh, let's just go ahead and host something here. Appiest YouTube, no password. Just you know, first come, first serve. And you know what we were talking about? Minor settlement battles. Let's do it. Let's do a minor settlement battle. I'm going to go ahead and throw that army in the trash. And let's get a tasty screen blocker up here. Hmm. I do love this meme. I really do. Boom. There it is. Enjoy that. Let's see who I've got as an opponent. And sure enough, it's Topher. Topher is the first one to jump in here. Hello there, General Kenobi. Glad to see you. He's uh, looks like he's going to defend with Dardania or Mycenae. I do want to attack. Uh, bu -bu 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 we just saw Ithaca in Paris. He looks like he's really leaning on Mycenae. Well, if he's going Aga... No, oh, he's going Phthia now. Okay. He's going to Achilles. Why don't I go Agamemnon then? Yeah, I'm gonna do Agamemnon. How do I wanna play this? Uh, the only rule is have fun. The lobby names equal the weirdest thing in Troy. You need to go check out lobby names in every Total War game. <laughs> you really do, Def. You gotta go check them all out because there's, they're always weird. I'm just thinking my way through my army right now, kind of getting a feel for what feels right at the funds I'm playing at. I've got good... I feel like I've got a good mix here. Okay. Uh, I have 380 funds left, so... Oh, yeah. Young Spear makes that easy. And I got a perfect spend. The, oh, the lobby names are okay in Medieval 2? I believe you. I believe you. I've never played multiplayer in Medieval 2. Um, I was too much of a, of a coward. <laughs> I didn't really ever start playing multiplayer battles in Total War games until Warhammer, actually. Um, I watched enough Air of Carthage that I finally got, you know, the... I finally got the stones up to actually give it a try. And I enjoyed it. I actually... I feel like I did pretty good. So part of the reason I'm wearing the kit for the video, not just because I want to show it off, um, but because I also really want to um, uh, wear this out. I want to make it look worn. I need to distress it, and wearing it's one way to distress it. Okay. This settlement is an interesting one to attack. It's a fairly simple one to defend. Um, your your point is up here, and you have, you know, only really two major ways to get to it. Um, 
and once you get down into the town proper that's where things start spreading out some but the majority of the attack axes are over here over here there's this mud bowl over there and then kind of one here and uh this is actually blocked off so they're wide but there's three major points of entry and then you just kind of have to fight your way through the town either going this way or go the long way back around here where your enemy can you know try and pull off some some uh, defensive strategies all right let's get my army a little bit more hidden uh not counting these of course he knows that i have these so he'll get to see them unless unless he can't you never know they, oh wait there might uh wait wait really really no I'd be shocked. I'd be shocked and appalled. Uh, and there is a way to advance over here. There's, yeah, there's no way that's going to work, but we'll see. It could be very amusing. really know what I'm thinking here yet, but maybe I can work something out here. Now, for the rest of my infantry, where am I putting you guys? I like the space I have here, so boom. Boom. Okay, I got my army set up. And what are we looking at? We're looking at none other than Achilles himself with 1,263 troops. And he had he had 10% more funds than I had in, in this setup. Me to you, men. What? I have no idea what you mean, mobile network. No idea. Anyway, I'm ready, so I'm just going to go ahead and hit that button. I'll be shocked and appalled if this works. I think he's already seen it. I, th I really do. Okay. So he's, right now he's kind of crafting his idea, like, where does he want to set up his defenders? He could deploy in the red zone. So he's probably thinking about putting units here, putting units here, uh, here, and here. Those would be the, the most important four spots to protect. Or does he just want to, you know, leave us one unit here and then draw his defensive line right there? Right there and right here. He could defend his, the center of his town like that. Um, and it looks like that's what he went for. It does look like that's what he went for. Um, this forces me to, you know, reveal my, my troops, my, my troops, my, uh, my hidden troops and, you know, what kind of plans I have. Oh my god, I am shocked and appalled. I'm shocked and appalled. Sneaky. <laughs> shocked and appalled. Uh, let's see here. He's brought four renowned armored slingers. They have a range of 180. So he's outranged me, and uh, he's he's brought, you know, he's brought five actually. He's brought more skirmishers than I have. Um, he set them out front. Yeah, he's gonna he's gonna make me crawl through all of this. A couple of spear fighting mer spear fighting myrmidons, champions of Thaya, heavy swordsmen, one reinforced chariot. I'm gonna be I'm gonna be hard pressed to uh, crack that nut is what it really boils down to, very hard pressed. 
So I do have I do have one advantage, actually. And I can start moving it up. And then all of these guys, I can just go ahead and because I have to I have to get them into a position where they can actually support. So I'm gonna have to move all of them up. Uh, let's see how close I can get right now. Okay. Yeah, now it's just the game of getting everybody into place. Here we go. The long march begins. So, while he does have a range advantage with his renowned armored slingers, I actually outrange him with my archer trickster. No, I don't. We have the same range, 180. So, I can get into a duel. It's just, uh, it might be painful for me. I mean, they're angled funny. I, can, I might be able to get some shots in unopposed. Let's see. Uh, he's falling back. I mean, okay. I'd rather shoot your heavy swordsman. Give a little boost to speed here. Alright, hero. Open fire. Uh, he's seen my chariots now. That's fair. Uh, his angle of attack is blocked, so he's not shooting. Let's try this guy. Yep, yeah, now he's shooting. What's up? <laughs> Took two casualties already. Took another, another four there. If you you don't want to you know wait back there? That's fine by me. Do these guys have? Oh, they do. That's useful. All right. Angle of attack is blocked again. Try this guy. Angle of attack is blocked. Try triple shot. I don't know. Just anything, please. He's gonna get in the range of the slingers here in a second. Let's just see how the triple shot goes. You gonna do it? You're gonna get shot at. He's not doing it. He's not doing it. Never mind. Not my cup of tea, sir. And also Achilles is coming. <laughs> well, he didn't bring... Let's go ahead and... Start lining these guys up. Get these guys back. Uh, Achilles stopped. Well, I mean, I can just shoot him. Where are you going, Achilles? Where are you going? Bink! <laughs> I'm just gonna dent his armor some, his pretty boy armor. At least he's fighting in the shade of this bush. Yeah, now he's, uh, now he's had enough of that. Okay, let's get other things moving up here. Is Achilles coming after my heavy spearman? That'd be useful. I don't know, let's see, let's just see if we can't tick off Achilles. In settlement battles, are funds different for attackers and defenders like in siege battles? Yes. So siege battles, the defender gets 70% health. In settlement battles, the defender gets, um, not health, funds. In um, settlement battles, the uh, the defender gets 90% funds. Which, I think that's really cool. And Topher agrees with me on this. Um, the minor settlement battles are way more interesting as a result. Way more interesting. Let's go ahead and put these guys over here. Let's move these guys out this way. 
I'm just going to go ahead and start arranging my attack, because I do have to attack. Um, I'm just very wary of these, uh, of these slingers. The Minotaur is going to be very helpful in dealing with, um... In dealing with the Achilles. Uh, no, don't go that way. Go this way, please. Shoot. Where do you guys think you're going? That's crazy. No, no, no. Just fall back, please. They almost started running up this way into danger zone to get shot just to defend over here. No thanks. No thanks. Alright, let's see who my hero can shoot at today. Get a little bit of a speed boost. Oh, is Achilles coming for me? I think he might. Alright, his angle isn't working out, so he's not shooting. I don't want to waste my ammo on Achilles. I told you to stop shooting, please. Thank you. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. Got him. <laughs> okay. Uh, I need to capitalize on this as, as soon as possible. Fully willing to commit and do an attack now. Hey, where are you going? Get back here, Achilles. Where are you going? Fight the Minotaur. Alright, he's done fighting Minotaur. Oh, he tried terrifying my Minotaur. Cute, but you know who also could do that? The Minotaur. Charge uphill here. Boom. Let's have both of these guys fire into that. Push up. Push up over here. Cherry can move up. Hero can move up. Minotaur is falling back, but that's okay. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. Minotaur is back. Let's just charge him into this battle. Club warriors are getting shot. Don't like that. Um, I guess I need to fall back with them. They really don't have a place for them to be. Not until I can get these guys over here. But he's going to move in a champion of Thaya. Yeah, this is really working out well for him. Really working out well for him. The foe has sighted your hidden units. And yeah, he just obliterated my bow of Mycenae. Somehow, when I'm fighting against Topher, I always underestimate how many ranged units to bring, um, even as an attacker. Uh, it's it's actually really impressive. He does very well with this. I think I've already lost, guys. I think, uh, I don't know that I can crack this nut the way it's set up. His, uh, his ranged units are very, very well positioned. I can't even, my hero can't even shoot them. And as you can see here, my bows of mice knee, they just got absolutely nuked. Yep. And he countered my, uh, my flanking plan, too. He's got, you know, he's got a mercenary, uh, uh Myrmidon already waiting there. I'm gonna try and, you know, just soften up the chariots, but not that it's gonna do me much good. Um, finally, I am getting some good shots here with my, uh, with my hero. Minotaur is gonna be ready for another, um, Savage Roar soon, which will be useful. I'm doing really well in the center. Um, that's at least going well for me. And I'm, I'm tearing apart his reinforced chariots. Still have a very healthy, um... Let's go ahead and put them in charge mode. Because these guys are unbreakable. They'll fight to the bitter end, so this this is locked as far as he's concerned. Um, 
and my javelins are doing really well over here with their shields. They're uh, they're doing phenomenally well in this position. He's got to fall back with his uh, chariots now, which he has. I, I know about my chariot. The problem is that he's got a lot of heavy infantry everywhere, okay? Um, you can't just charge your chariots into heavy infantry. Um, I've, I've thought about it. Don't, don't, don't you worry. I haven't forgotten them. Let's put a triple shot into this. I now at least have a chariot advantage. What I really need to do is win in the middle. Oh, no, my... Dang it! I was just about to use the Savage Roar on my Minotaur, and then he broke. Let's keep pushing here. Heavy Swordsmen are broken. Now we've got a Champion of Thaya to deal with. Those of Mycenae are back. They're firing into this. Let's go do another one of these. Boom. He's bringing his Chariots back in. Let's go ahead and open fire on them with those. There goes my Minotaur, shattered, just before I could get his next um, Savage Roar. Oh, he's broken me in the center, hasn't he? Shoot. Shoot. Oh, he's broken through. Look at that. I mean, there's nothing left of his chariots, though. I'm not. I'm not intimidated at all. Yeah, there they go. Let's let these guys shoot into this blob. One of your units has no 68 more men. 62, 95. I don't know. Maybe I should just bring them over here. There's only 19 left there. Let's get another triple shot on this. You have lost a unit. Oh yeah, they're chasing me out of the middle now. Oh, and I broke on the right. Well, yeah. Not not great. Time for that uh, rapid fire triple shot machine gun. I just gotta hope I can plow right through these spear fighting Myrmidons on the left. Ah, here comes Achilles. And here goes my chariots. He's trying getting his Myrmidons out of there. They're, thankfully, though, the Champions of Thaya are just too few in number. They can't actually do anything about the, my Chariot Charge. So I just gotta... I just gotta... This is like my last-ditch effort here, you know. Uh, I don't really have much left after this. He did a good job getting his um, Heavy Swordsman back here. Uh, I'm gonna... I've routed that Armored Slinger, getting into the next Armored Slinger. Bring that over... This is a glorious chariot charge. It's not going to be enough. Uh, just kind of trying my best here. Get into the next chariot. Or next uh, slinger unit. I'm being chased by all this heavy infantry, but there's nothing I can do about it. Too much heavy infantry. And too many Myrmidons. Not enough solutions. And my hero's about to die here any second. Have you said your last goodbyes? Not that though. Got a good charge there with the chariots. Gonna just fall back again. 
I'm amazed my hero is still not dead. The divine challenge is over. He's trying to terrify out my uh, my light javelin, so I'm just gonna mob Achilles, I guess. <laughs> Get the chariots moving again. Oh come on, Homer! You only just now figured that out. There it is. We're done. Antons, it's been a pleasure watching you. Uh, it's been a while, but got suit, uh, but got busy day tomorrow. Oh yeah, yeah, that's fine. I knew this was a late stream. I knew this was late. Um, yeah, five slingers. I mean, again, Topher always manages to to outpick me. Is what it boils down to. It. I thought for sure with um, with you know these four, I'd have a good advantage. And when he picked Thaya, I was like, no, oh, he's playing Thaya. He's not even gonna bother with with uh, ranged units. Not the case at all. Um, the the slingers were what really did me in. You, you could see the numbers here, just devastating numbers from slingers. And then the um, you know the heavy infantry, mediocre. Uh, but they they did what they had to do, which was protect the slingers from things like you know my chariots. My chariots though, greatly outperformed his. Uh, I'm glad that my light javelin men were able to get some some value out of those guys. Um, didn't get anything out of my club warriors, uh, unfortunately. My armored spearmen on the left did okay. I was one savage roar away from winning that battle in the middle, and I just I got to it way too late. Spartoi, of course, died to a man like they do. Like they do. Let's see here. Our kill MVP, though, probably going to be the spearfighting Myrmidon. Wait a minute. No, did I outkill him? I did. I did outkill him. Uh, the reinforced chariots, just the last minute, the last, like, two minutes of that battle. 191 kills good god good god <laughs> and also a good job that was fun what do you recommend between warhammer 3 and troy i don't know i've not played warhammer 3 yet uh yeah the range advantage did, does pay off in settlement battles skirmishers are too good to pass up on in settlement battles yeah no you're right i just you just always manage to to outpick me when it comes to those the chariot made almost a quarter of your kills. Yeah, yeah. I, I knew, I was waiting. when You had mentioned, Max, that I needed to use my chariots. I, I, I was thinking about it. It was just waiting for one of those three choke points to, to be weak enough for my chariots to go through. And that's why I went to the left. Um, it worked out, the, the chariot charge. But unfortunately, it was just the slingers tore me apart. All right, all right. Let's... Uh, Let's swap, and we're going to pick a different settlement. How about the quarries? Uh, we'll do tier 3 quarries. Nah, I don't like that map so much. It's a downhill map. It's a little weird. Uh, Pangaian Hills? No, that's not even really a Windy Labyrinth. Here we go, we'll do uh, Bargilia's Furnaces. This time I'm defending, and I'm gonna be playing against Death. Very good, very good. I'll play as Argos. Hey, he's playing as Dardania. Ooh, interesting. All right, see you, Topher. Thank you for coming in. Let me go ahead and get my screen blocker set up. There's the lad. Good lad. Excellent lad. Oh, he's playing as um, Lycia now. Okay. Lycia.
I need 960 funds. Bowman cost 480. Okay. I guess I'm doing that then. <laughs> I hate Bowman. I really hate Bowman. Okay, I'm ready. So yeah, I'm very excited about this uh, this garb. Um, I got the confirmation email that says that uh, my application to play in Malleus was accepted. So that really kind of spurred some new activity in working on this kit. My wife actually knit this uh, this hood. Um, the uh, the tunic is uh, a, is from I bought it from a web from uh, from a from a company known as Berg Schneider. They make great great LARP gear at you know, period looking gear at decently affordable prices. And I spent today just, I actually took a knife to this thing. I needed it to look messed up and torn up. So I've, I've cut all sorts of holes in it. Um, I ripped off, um, like a foot of length off the bottom. I'm just, I've devastated this thing. It's great. And then this rope is actually rope from, uh, for, that I use for a period tent. And I've just I've used a bit of uh, leather um, leather straps to to tie tie it to this chain, and I just kind of wrapped it around a couple of times. Once this way, once this way, once uh, once around the chest, and then I have another tent rope around the waist. Um, still to come, some leggings, and I do have shoes. I should go grab the shoes and show those off. Uh, I bought the shoes that I had listed on my Ko-Fi. Ko-Fi, which is right below my face, if you want to support the channel. The other way you can support the channel is the old-fashioned way. There's, you know, super chats and stuff set up now. It's pretty cool. So, I wonder if there's another map in the distance that we might be aware of. Hold on. Going exploring. No, I don't think that's a map. Too many trees. I think the minor settlement is actually on its own map without anything else nearby. Hmm. I like finding other maps behind maps. Actually, it's out this way. spotted the trees on top of this mountain and I was a little weirded out. Right, I'm defending. Okay, so I saw plenty of axes. Lots of axes. I saw some elite axes, too. Um, we've got hunters, which only have a range of uh, 150. So I think I've got the range advantage. He's brought three heavy Lycian chariots. That's fun. I'm glad I brought five armored spearmen. Um, I do have some sneaky stuff I can try to pull off. He says that he accidentally... There are no rules. Don't worry about it. There are no rules. Have fun. Besides, I don't want to go into an end screen and then show him the sneaky units that I've decided to bring. You know? I just kind of want to see where he's uh, deploying his attack from, and then I'm going to deploy my defense accordingly. Let me just go ahead and put everybody back here for the time being. And, you know, start plugging a couple of holes. See, this map, I definitely think it's wiser to defend uh, 
outward because these choke points are super small super small and i can get anywhere inside um this section very very quickly hey warhead diomedes looking real thick yeah a little a little what's his this is a defender hero didn't expect to see a defender renowned lycian warriors they do not have fear heavy axe i think i've got them i think i've beat them already i definitely i just have this feeling hooked on a feeling burn burn out coravantes i see you see you lion hat mother truckers what's up okay so that is the best unit in the game right there if you those of you who don't know and i'm gonna have to be prepared for that hunters hero what's the numbers 1307 okay well let's do some math 120 times four so that's 480 plus another you know that's that makes it 600 720 721 plus 36 757 a quarter of auntie says 50 i see 807 of his 1300 men uh there were three hunters that i saw and he's ready now okay all right well i've got to start deploying i think I want these guys over here. I really think he's not coming this way. I'm still going to leave one of my heavy spearmen out there, just in case. I brought Bowman. Uh, uh, Y'all better be very proud of me for bringing Bowman. Oh, he's moved his Court of Antis. I just need to be very careful before I agree to anything before I hit that start button battle that there's nobody right in front of these two guys because they're very important in the strategy put those guys over here uh, you know what let's do that because I think the court of is going to be over here we'll keep these guys kind of in reserve position here do 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 do, -do. Let's group that. Let's group all of that. That's he'll be a group. This will be a group. And I still have one more. Aha! He's moved one of his heavy lacy and chariots over here. Okay. No. Yes. All right. Let's. I'm gonna force him into it. Let's get my chariots over. Let's see what he does about that. He's coming forward, okay. Ah, I see hunters, okay. My chariots are actually currently unseen. Hold on. There's the Cordovantes. I think they're going to go ahead and push into... Yeah, two Cordovantes. Lycian champions. They are pushing over here. Lycian champions do not have a shield. Oh. Oh. That's right. They sure don't. that up oh this is gonna get ugly on on this flank first for sure their range is 150 they have better range than my bowman how unfortunate let's get let's get diomedes over here this is gonna be fun this is gonna be really fun It looks like the hunters are coming back this way, okay? I'm okay to shoot with my bowmen into heavy axe warriors. Totally okay with that. Oh, man. He's... Ah. Uh, this is disgusting. This right here, that's disgusting. Okay. 
Alright, uh, he's let me get my armored Argus Slingers into position. His mistake. Scooch that. Scooch. Scooch. Oh, my screen blocker's still up? Oh, my goodness. Thanks, guys. <laughs> yeah, there you go. My bad. Diomedes was looking thick. <laughs> Thank you, Warhead. Okay, here we go. He's making his play on the left. The foe has sighted your hidden units. And he's seen my night runners now. Let's see if he takes them in the scrubs. But with my chariots on arrival, he's caught. So I got that. Boom. I'm just staring down these two Cordovantes out here. Totally cool by me. Let me just get my uh, slingers into position. I'm losing in the long run. Let me just go ahead and reposition these. Uh... I'm going to do this. And now, let's get my swords to just chase that. And I'm going to use my reinforced chariots to chase that Lycian chariot. He'll have nowhere to go except towards his armored spearmen. And I get free dibs on his hunters until the other two chariots show up. And we're going to go ahead and shoot some Cordovantes. And we're just going to shoot over that fight into all of these renowned Lycian warriors. That works for me. He does have his Lycian champions over here as well. That's important. But I'm just going to go ahead and make some kills on Hunters. Defeated his chariots. Going to fall back here. He's activated his shield wall. I'm going to start shooting the champions instead. Because those are a much more easy target to kill with my, uh, with my slings. He's going to fall back. I can push up. Now I'm going to make this guy's life miserable. He's really trying to get into my bowman, which is stupid. <laughs> like, I don't care about my bowman, dude. I really don't. <laughs> They're actually earning me money just shooting these renowned Lycian warriors. He's really trying to get my bowman. Honestly, just going to ignore that. How did he get that chariot back? Come on. Alright, well, I'm actually in a ton of trouble over here. Let's see if I can't do something goofy. And now that I got him in the scrubs, I'm going to turn around with my chariots, which have the same disadvantage as his, and then charge in with my light run my night runners. Get Diomedes to ruin this guy's day. And then I'm going to have my... I'm going to get back to work on those renowned Lycian archers. I'm going to actually put them on guard mode so that they just ignore this fight as much as possible he's and Diomedes is going to ruin that guy's freaking day is under attack. that is right he is he is under attack but he's ruining that uh, defender protect his life hunters are doing work right now I love this and let's get let's get these guys to just drop back a, like a step it looks like you know, it looks like I did lose this, but not before I made it miserable for him. And I still have plenty of heavy infantry. And let's go ahead and start 
shooting up some more hunters. They're kind of blobbed up anyway. My bowmen out here still putting in the uh, the effort. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. Let's get that guy back over here. Hades has claimed the enemy here. Killed the defender. Let's get Diomedes back in that fight. Killed that. Let's, they're still overlapped, so I'll just go ahead and kill more of them. One of your units has no more ammunition. All of that looks like it's routing now, with the exception of the heavy infantry. Hey, mobile network. Glad you could make it anyway. Thank you. Oh, he routed one of my Argive Slingers. Let's go ahead and start shooting some Cordomantes. Oh, we got the Slingers. They regrouped right away, and now they're shooting over the heads of everybody. Let's pump up his Aristea a little bit. Target that. Get in there. Oh, here comes the heavy chariots. We got blood in the water. Need to kill these chariots before they break through. And it looks like they are going to try and find a way around. Let's see if I can't just shoot them apart first. They're taking a heavy damage. They might not make this charge. Ooh! Ooh! Oh, got him! Got him! Let's open fire on that. Let's recharge this with my chariot so I can get a little bit of value out of them. My, uh... My night runners do not have a chance here, but let's just play like they do. <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Chariot rear charge into Cordovantes. They won't route, but I can do damage. Let's get them out here. Let's send them upstream. Let's get my slingers focusing on... Those champions. I'm just going to fall back a bit first. Okay, my chariot shattered. I have one out here. Almost one out here. Let's just fall back with this guy. I've lost the unit. Where? Oh, okay, that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> night runners. Okay, I've got reinforcements somewhere, right? Honestly, you just bring this guy up. This guy's out of ammo, so I'm actually going to turn him around. These two bowmen are out of ammo now. I can use them to chase that, I think. Let's get Diomedes back in here. Diomedes is doing work for me, guys. It's pretty excellent. I fall back with him. That's fine. I, th I don't think he's ready to break through here yet. Which is funny, because he should. Okay, everybody's broken. Everybody's shattered. Okay. Let's get these guys all back here. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, Cordovanti's falling back. Good, good. Shoot those chariots. I don't want to see them again. Go ahead, slingers. Shattered. I mean, credit to death. He's keeping his uh, Lycian champions very safe for my slingers. My slingers are basically out of ammo. Um... Only one of them has any rounds left now. 
And he activated the shield wall on his Cordovantes too to just make that a little bit tougher for me. Alright, and that's it for my Armored Argive Swingers. They're out of ammo now. Oh, you decided last second not to not to charge. Okay, he's got everybody over here now. I think I've dealt with all of his, uh, his chariots. Okay. Now then, let's do... This way, guys. Yeah, he's gonna charge in with these um, axe chargers first. Not a bad plan. Let's uh, use this. Boom. Let's get Diomedes Aristea. Let's have him charge in here as well. He's really counting on his uh, Lycian champions now. It's pretty much all he has left. Buff that up. It's down to this. And I also still have this over here. Let's get him in. I'm going to put these guys in charge mode. Let's do the pulverize. Watch Diomedes get some big damage in here against the Lycian champions. Get a rallying cry just to make sure our men are really holding their ground. Here comes the hunters into melee now. And I've got another Arg of Swordmaster on the way. All these guys are working on a flanking mission. The Cordovantes are hanging back though, which is smart. Diomedes is doing phenomenal in this bout. He really is. He's got a bloodied face, but he's still on it. We're gonna activate Cleave. Here comes the Cordovantes now. They're throwing in. I need these guys over here now. Okay, we've almost dealt with the Lycian champions. This is just... This is one big ball of death, guys. I think his hunters are doing as much damage against his own troops as they are mine. I keep watching some of his guys fall forward from arrows hitting him in the back. I think this is going really in my favor. Diomedes is a force to be reckoned with. Get in there, get in there, get in there. Holy cow, look at this. My other Arg of Swordmaster is pretty much gone. All, all of Diomedes' abilities are on cooldown right now. I'm just going to get this other Armored Arg of Slinger in here just to put his body into the fray. The, the Hunters are out of ammo. Got another cleave going. It says nobody is winning this fight. Look at this. Everybody's got red X's. That means everybody is losing. Hunters are now throwing in. <laughs> man, oh man. This is a battle of Greek epic. It really is. It really is. Everybody just kind of eventually decided we have to win this spot nowhere else. Man, those, credit to those Lycian champions. They are still here. But I'm about to make life miserable for Cordovantes. I missed. I got... Dang it. Oh, well. That's it. His army routed. 
Just gotta kill the Cordovantes now. And my flank is complete. Skaven approved meat grinder. Glad to have you, Skaven Blight Radio. Let's just watch these Cordovantes die. Killer says, no, I see champions. No, they are out. He says, rip. They did a they held out a really long time. That's right, Diomedes. Kill those Cordovantes. And how about those Swordmasters not breaking? Holy cow. Four men left in that unit. They're still at it. Three men left in that unit. They're still at it. They haven't broken yet. About to get another cleave here. Boom. Okay, yeah. It sounds like I just lost that one Argive Swordmaster. They're all shattered. I don't need to worry about them. Let's go ahead and rear charge. Melee mode Bowman. I can't believe I'm doing this, guys. 29 kills and they've earned XP. What am I looking at? Oh, he's, he's coming out to meet me. <laughs> That's a meme. I bet you the Cordovantes will win this fight. With only 15 dudes. Yeah, they'll kill 60 Bowmen. The other Cordovantes is at 11 men left. Alright, he fled. Anybody else? Anybody else want to get in this fight? It's literally everyone. What a meat grinder. Holy cow. He has 20 troops left of 1,300. And I have 300 troops left of 1,300. Ugh. Timidis, get in there. Everybody, get in there. Kill those men. I should put these guys in, in uh, attack mode. Shields on back. Let's get Diomedes cam. No, 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 not quite. Where is he? There he is. There he is. I'm used to it being a little bit higher up. Not this time. It's just okay. This is this is nause nauseating. I'm gonna do a better. There, finally, they're all dead. God. Oh man. This is why I love minor settlement battles. They they take a while, but they're they're grind out, drag out fights. And it's never quite so simple as saying that. Oh hey, the defender wins because they get ten percent. Or because they get the choke points. Not, not quite. They they take that 10% um, uh, funds penalty and it really works against them. Um, as you see here though, I really handled the Lycian Warriors well um, with Bowman. I've got the, the two Lycian Champions. Death did a great job keeping them protected. Um, the three Chariots, I felt like I handled those very well as well. Um, 22 kills for my Reinforced Chariot isn't bad. They did earn one XP because they helped me to kill one of these guys. And I managed to get a lot of work done with my Night Runners. They both earned two XP Chevrons. Hell yeah. Um, but I think the true kill MVP was the Meat Grinder. Argiv Swordmasters. 258 enemy troops killed. Mmm. <laughs> do love it. I do love it. Yeah, that, that's right. Max says, those Argiv Swordsmen. I know, man. I know. The Swordmasters, they could be really, really good. And look, they didn't all die. One of them escaped. The One of those Arg of Swordmasters in that unit shattered before he died. That little green sliver right there means that somebody lived. They were not killed to a man. Mwah. Regina, I'm so glad you could make it. You're a, a, an old friend of mine from the era of Carthage server days. This is great. I'm glad you could make it. 
But this was that was a great fight. It was a really really solid fight. Very had a lot of fun with that. Let's uh, let's try something different now. Let's go for let's go for some land battles, the good old fashioned modes. Uh, what's a map I like that we haven't seen in a while? Glowing glades, glowing glades. What's with the shabby hood? I'm a peasant. I'm I'm in peasant garb. Here, I'll back up for you because uh, you deserve to see this. This is uh, peasant attire. I've got got ropes, chains. I'm just a bloody peasant playing Troy. That's all. How did the Arg of Swordmasters perform like that? Well, they have bonus versus everything you brought. Um, in particular, they have a bonus versus axes. Let me let's check it. Let's check it out real quick. I'll show you what I mean. The um, the bonus versus axes is huge. Uh, it's it's at eight points of damage on top of their already decent 125, and uh, and their bonus versus large I think is dumb and needs to go. I don't like seeing swords units with bonus versus large unless they're large themselves. Yes, I am peasant of the unworthy to name way. <laughs> like well, seeing champions melt anything in the game. I think not this time they didn't. Um, and, and good on you for keeping them, you know, out of the fight. That was the best part. YouTube randomly informed you that uh, I was streaming after forever of not telling me. Well, hey, it's it happens. Not enough mis- Actually, you know, Regina, the patches are coming. Um, this is, this is like, this is actually mid-creation. There's gonna be like a ugly white patch like right here, right here, one or the other. I've already got holes like already cut into and torn all over the, the tunic. The, the patches are coming. The, the entire aesthetic is absolutely the Bretonian peasant. So, I'm, I'm definitely excited about this. So, who am I fighting? Who's it going to be? Who's it going to be? Rico, you want to get in here? You want to fight me? i got to put this on uh, good old-fashioned large fonts. I feel like getting my butt kicked again. <laughs> but 9 out of 10, not enough mismatch patches. No, the patches are definitely coming. Like, that is that is on my wish list. Um, what, what else is, is coming? Uh, there's... Oh, I ought to go grab those shoes. I'll be right back. Because I, I, I mentioned the shoes earlier. They're really, really cool, and I do want to show them to you. So let me transition that. I will return in a moment, and that'll give my opponent, whoever it's going to be, a chance to show up in here. Enjoy the music.
wear back. And I got shoes to show off. I actually got a chance to wear these at a LARP just the other weekend. These are my peasant shoes. Um, but I love, this is from a company called uh, Viking Leathercraft. These shoes uh, cost me about 85 bucks. Um, it's, you know, a authentic veg tan leather. Um, the buckles are great. I actually ended up cutting some of my own holes in, in, the, in the straps so that uh, I could get them to fit just the way I wanted. And one of the reasons that they cost extra is because I put modern soles on them. I th this these are boot soles, legit flat, full on boot soles. But they're just they're just very good quality shoes. Um, I gotta put some mink oil on them, make them do a little bit better in the rain. But for the meantime, though, they look rugged as hell, and that's what I'm going for. It's absolutely what I'm going for with those. So those will be the shoes that I wear with this. Hello, Hammond. And uh, yeah, I'm a peasant. Oh, why did I take the hood off? Let's be extra pointy about it. There we go. Oh, man. Oh, I just dropped one of my earbuds. Get that back in there. Okay, so I got Topher to fight against. We're going to be playing on this map. Let me quickly put up my screen blocker. An old meme, but still a goodie. And I won't forget to take it down this time. We're playing on Glowing Glades. He's playing as, uh, as Sparta. Oh, sure, I'll play as Dardania. Definitely playing as Dardania. And we got a comment here. 8.30 a.m. for Rico right now. 9.30 a.m. for Topher. That's fair. Thank you for coming in, Rico. It was fun having you. Happy Compy. Uh, everybody go check out his channel. He's uh, very successful. About three times or four times as successful as I am. He says, do you ever play campaign? I'd love to hear your advice and thought processes. Uh, I've been doing a bunch of Hippolyta campaign in Mythos. Um, you ought to check that out. Uh, I'll tell you, the Griffin opens up the Hippo... The, Hippo, the Hippolyta campaign gets opened up by the Griffin like crazy. On Legendary Difficulty, I went from struggling in Truth Behind the Myth mode to rickrolling the enemies. It's been a, It's been a blast. Anyway, let's, uh, Topher's a good opponent. I have to give him my best effort here. I can't just half-ass an army. I've got to try and, and put together something decent. Um, so, I gotta focus on this for a minute. Okay, what was it? Two, three, four. Yeah, so that's 4,400 on heavies, right. He's got a medium infantry advantage. How can I... You know, this might be interesting. You know what? How about... Yeah. Do something really... I mean, I am going to try and do something different here. He could have Spartoy, he could have some decent heavy infantry, so I do think I need to bring Old Faithful here. And then, I think, oh yeah, I mean. It works, but what if instead of you I brought you and I can do another one of you and what's the it's 19 okay I'm ready no Regina I am not spending all my money on archers and besides this army doesn't have any boom Jace I'm glad you can make it hello how are you uh, everybody Jace is actually a friend of mine from LARPs um, <laughs> uh, a recent friend, they, they actually got to watch me do, and I got to watch them do, um, plenty of shenanigans in, uh, at, at Damarung in these last two events. Archer meme started with Ithaca Boy and it will never end. Death, I used those archers against you. I brought those bowmen against you and I put them in melee mode and everything. That was all for you. 
uh, Jace, you can pretend all you like. I'm going. I, every time I play this game, I try to educate the audience as to what's going on. I don't know if I'm still successful at that because most of the people that have stuck around really know this game well at this point. Um, I hope Mythos kills archers. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Jace says there for the, that that he's here for the LARP content. Well, I'm I'm wearing my my peasant. This is my peasant. I'm wearing it right now. I was just showing off my shoes that I wore for uh, for Dameron because I'm going to be wearing them with the uh, the peasant as well. There's still more coming. I've got to get a patch in here. I've got uh, there's another tunic coming. There's another um, there's a some some leggings coming. I might even get a floppy hat to put on top of this um, if I'm really lucky. If I'm a, a wealthy peasant. <laughs> I miss this map. I haven't done this. I've done 2v2s on this map a bunch. 2v2s are fun. But we've got, you know, we've got trees. We've got rocky outcroppings. And we even have some uh, tall grass. Um, I've had some great memories of killing Achilles with Cyclops in, in this terrain. Playing as Paris. Man, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I'm, I'm glad you're here to support as a friend, Chase. I, it means a lot. Every Everybody that comes in is always helpful. Who is your peasant and why are you wearing him? His name is Henri Lemire, meaning Henry of the Swamp. Um, the game that I'm going to be attending is takes some heavy influences from, among other things, Warhammer Fantasy. Um, and there is a faction in this game that is based on, you know, like, feudal France, just like you might be used to seeing in uh, in, in Warhammer. Um, that faction is called Leonis, and I saw it as an opportunity to make a Bretonian peasant and play it at this LARP, uh, and I'm going to. Uh, they approved my, my character application and everything very recently, and now my dreams come true. I get to be, I get to be an archer I, not an archer. I get to be uh, a peasant bowman. Not a bowman. A peasant mob. That's the one. I get to be a peasant mob. Let's see. Where do I want to put chariots? Not there. Over here. Yeah. Let's we'll do that. And Topher says, "Good luck. Have fun. Thank you, Topher." Now, what am I doing with all of these? Let's do some of them over here. You two over here. Let's get groups set up. He's a group. Heavy infantry's a group. There's a group. She's a group. These three are a group. And these two are a group. And the screen blocker. Boom. We're ready. We're ready. Here we go. Um, what do I know of my opponent? He cannot have an archer hero. That is not Menelaus. It is Sparta. And he's brought 500 fewer troops than me. Let's just see how this goes. He's got everybody kind of clustered over here. Two heavy chariots. I see two Spartoi. One armored spearman and two heavy heroic axe warriors. That's it for his heavy infantry. He's brought five heavy infantry. He has more units somewhere. Um, and they're probably running towards my harpies as we speak. Um... So, I'm going to move in with that just to check it out. I'm going to move this over here and check that out. I'm going to use my hero to start killing Heroic Axe Warriors. And I got my Heartbeat Fiends kind of over here in reserve. And I'm going to wheel this over. He's got a, a, an Achaean Slinger out here. That's I'm not even threatened by it. And I have the Cavalry Advantage. Let's swing around. Your hero is under attack. I'm not even going to be... I'm not even going to flinch at that. Okay, he's coming in for it, though. No, he's not. He made like he was gonna, but he didn't. Okay, here's a light spear runner. I need to keep my eyes on those. And there's a pair of Laconian hillmen. Okay. It looks like he's just going to push on my light infantry out here. 
Which, I mean, I don't blame him for that. I might I might have done the same thing. Harpies, nope, 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 nope. Out of position. Fall back. Do not just run into heroic axe warriors or don't let their javelins kill you. That could be a very bad story here in a second. Woo, close. And here comes the light spear runners. I gotta, I gotta dance. Definitely have to dance with my hero. Let's see if we can't get the harpies in on that. I love the harpies. I really do. They're doing me they're doing me a lot of favors right now. There are some Laconian hillmen out here, I gotta remember. Let's just wheel that around. Fall back. Doing the damage that I need to do. And that's all that I really care about right now. Gonna wheel around this light infantry. Let's clear out those Laconian hillmen. Gonna get my cavalry and chariots back over here. Let's get the Harpies in on those Heroic Axe Warriors. Keep shooting their heavy infantry with my hero. The trick is to get the attack going all at once. I, I've lost sight of his Laconian Hillman. That's interesting. Alright, I need to get into this now. I wonder where his Laconian Hillmen are. Oh, there they are. They're right there at the back. Yeah, and he's got the Spartoy in here now. He has heavy infantry for all of my heavy infantry. Let's get my light troops in here. Oh, man. I don't think... I might not be able to win this, actually. This could be very tough. He wisely put his light his uh, light spear runners into my chariots and my uh, centaur warriors. warriors. Heart. Where? Yeah, yeah, my chariots or my centaurs are. Yeah. Oh uh, yeah, too late for the centaurs. Um, let me see if I can't get my Trojan chariots out of here real quick. Let's get their mass involved and then. Yeah, 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 yeah. So as you can see, my uh, Coastal Club Warriors really no match for the Laconian Hillmen, but I'm just trying to use their bodies now to cause an impact while my chariots go after the heavy infantry in a rear charge. He's a message for me. He says, GG's. He thinks it's done. Oh, man. I think he's right, though. I think Dardania did pull this off. I just, I didn't have a moment to, like, blink or, or flinch, you know? But my chariot's having the free ground there. And wow, look at this! My coastal club fighters with the support of those Savage Centaur Warriors, they really did clean up those light spear runners. And I guess my coastal club warriors did do an okay job. He's gonna throw into um, his Aristea, which is smart. Um, my chariots just cleaned up his heavy infantry all down the line. And yeah, yeah, let's get into this. There it is. Thank you, Homer. Thank you, Homer. Let's get you some close-ups, because we, we've been neglecting that this battle. He's the shirtless ones here. I'm the ones in the green tunics. And here comes my chariots. I think the biggest thing here was probably actually my harpy fiends. But that that rear charge, that's just going to eviscerate everything that's left of that Laconian Hillman. And, yeah, all of his units are shattered. That's what that skull means. They're all pretty much done. My Dardanian defenders are going to clean up that hero all by themselves. There goes the Spartoy. No more Spartoy over here. All we're waiting for now is for the hero to either, you know, become exhausted or die. I'm going to let him fight that Dardanian defender, though, to his heart's extent. Celebratory Aristea. Now where's his hero going? What you want? You want some coastal club fighters? They want a piece of you. There we go. Coastal club fighters. Of all the, uh, of all of the, um... Expendable units to bring. I, I I picked them knowing it was going to be risky. I wanted to use them to try and outflank the enemy infantry. Never got that opportunity. I had to throw them into battles with light spear runners and chariots. Thankfully, 
their bodies helped help to push the tide of the battle against the light spear runners and chariots which could have done a number on my my forces let's get the let's get the uh let's get my ladies in here harpy fiends go there we go they've got their masks on as is appropriate I'm sure they're all also vaccinated, but you know they're being considerate of their of their neighbors by wearing masks anyway. My hero is out here trying to shoot their hero. Is this Aristea still going? What is this? No, his Aristea ended a while ago. Why is he still? Uh, am I missing something? Where's the rest of the battle? Yeah, no, his he. Oh, he activated his uh, berserk. That unit has a berserk ability, and that's why he hasn't routed yet. That's interesting. Black Death says, why Hillman cause fear but don't do enough damage? Do they win by being uglier than giants? <laughs> Maybe. Maybe that's what it is after all. I'm trying to give the Harpies the highlight here. Come on. Was there lag too? Well, the lag was there because I had the screen blockers still up and I hadn't quite put the... Oh, I hope you guys don't mind uh, decapitated heads. Um, oh, wow. He just, he just unhanded a couple of Harpy Fiends. Harpy Feeds are great melee units, as well as Javelin Chuckers, by the way. This is fun. I am enjoying myself, guys. I mean, she's out there in the back going, yeah! Yeah! <laughs> oh, come on. Why is this guy still alive? This guy's really into it. He's not getting out of here. There it is. He ran. We got it. We got it. Hillman can 2v1 an Arg of Swordmaster? Really? Is that true, Topher? Or are you are you BSing me? I mean, I get, if you get the flank, sure. And they do have fear. I bet you they could crack that morale. That would make sense, but... Ugh, oh, I want to see that. Can you... Hold on, hold on. Don't go anywhere, Topher. Thank you. Uh, can you bring to um, Hillman, please? I have to see this. I have to see this. The Ark of Swordmasters are, are a... They're a disappointing unit in general. Um, in, in a very general sense. Their uh, their success varies widely. I know I just used them for like 500 kills in the last battle. I get it, but but then there's moments like what was just described by Topher in the chat that Hillman can two v one an Arg of Swordmaster, and I I bet you that that it's true. I bet you that's true. For a little bit of context here. Two Hillmen cost about 1,100 funds, and the uh, the Arc of Swordmaster cost 1,300. So it's only a 200 point gap. Only 200. That's relatively small in in large funds battles. Um, but what's really important here is that the Arc of Swordmasters they do not have anything protecting their morale, and the Hillmen are a unit that cause fear. And in a 2v1 scenario, the Swordmasters are also going to suffer from being outflanked to their morale penalties. So they're going to be taking a bunch of morale penalties by facing two Hillmen. And I can see it happening. So for, let's hear. So the morale on a, on a Swordmaster is 75, which is good. Um, they do have flanking defense improved, but that doesn't protect them from the morale hit. He says, oh, by the way, I forgot to mention there's some micro involved. I, I believe you. I definitely believe you. I'm, I'm really, I just want him to demonstrate it. So I'm going to move, I'm going to move the sword masters up here and I'm pretty much just going to leave it alone. I'm going to put it in fast forward. Regina says, uh, is it 2v1 at the same time or are the sword masters piling up in a blob one behind the other? Um, well, no, the 2v1 is the two hillmen versus the one sword master. The hillmen are a light infantry lightly armored there's they only have 25 armor rating no shields 
Um, the thing that they have going for them is that they cause fear. Uh, it is the second cheapest um, fear-causing unit in the game. The only one that... that uh, there's one that does it better, and that's um, the Centaur Warriors at 450. Um, but they're kind of a crap unit. Yeah, two Hillmen versus one Swordmaster. So the Swordmaster has Javelins... He's got to be very careful about how he fights the, the a unit with javelins. And sure enough, that's what he's demonstrating here. He engaged the Swordmasters from behind, um, making it so that the Swordmasters never got to use their ammo. You can see that the Laconian Hillmen are losing the battle. But the second the other Hillmen shows up, the morale is down to below 50% now. They're outflanked, and they're taking big-time damage. The It was the rear-attacking Laconian Hillmen that really made the difference here. Um, so the Swordmaster's ratcheting up quickly to 70 kills against this first Laconian Hillman. But the morale continues to dip. It's just... And it, they're going to break their morale before the Laconian Hillman lose theirs. They're at two points, three points. It Oh, man, it's... It might go... There it is. And they're beat. And they're beat. It's really close. But those two Hillmen beating an Ark of Swordmaster... The most expensive unit in Argos's roster, routed and shattered by two cheap light infantry units. I liked that. I liked that a lot. That was very informative. So, I have a love-hate relationship with the Swordmasters. I have a very love-hate relationship with them. I I love I love their bonus versus Axemen. I love their 125 damage with bonus versus swords. Um, I don't love that they cost 1300, you're capped to two, and that they only have 65 armor. They're a medium infantry, they're also vulnerable to chariots. I don't love that they have a bonus versus large. This has not been explained to me, and I don't get why a medium sword infantry unit gets a bonus versus large. That is. In my knowledge of 20 years of playing Total War games, I've never, never, ever seen a, a sword infantry unit have a bonus versus large. That just never happened. Regina, call me on it. <laughs> um, so Regina, we don't need to try it again, because I'll tell you exactly what happens. If the, if the first Hillman charges from the front, the sword masters throw at least one javelin volley. And the Hillmen can't defend against that. They die. <laughs> um, I'd say that probably gets you 15 to 20 kills. And then their morale is already down. They get the, the counter charge. It, it has to be double rear charge. Yeah, I agree, Topher. That was that was still fascinating. I definitely very much appreciated that. Let's, uh, let's get somebody else in here. Let's do some more battles. Topher, I'm kicking you out. You've played me enough. Let's get somebody else in here. Um, so it's a very, it's a very, like I said, love-hate relationship. Um, they, for 1,300 funds, that 125 damage, while it's good, it's not as good as it should be. If it was 160, they'd be doing a lot better. Um, for, for comparison's sake, uh, an elite sword unit at around that cost, let's look at Ithaca. Um, Warriors of Ithaca costs only 1,030, so cheaper unit, 160 sword damage. And I agree with you, Regina, I do. But it, I, the, the point it proves, to me anyway, is that the, the sword masters, they just, they underperform. Um, if you took a warrior of Ithaca here against a sword master in a straight 1v1 fight, the warriors of Ithaca win. They have better damage, they have the similar armor, similar shield rating. They have the same javelins, actually, but they just do more damage. Um, I don't know, I mean, so for what we just demonstrated was a very, like, perfect, perfect scenario, you know? Uh, we haven't seen, who haven't we seen any, if Killer looks like he's bringing, we haven't seen any Amazons, have we? I don't think so. I'm going to play some Amazons against Killer. Against Death on Hill of Despoina. That works for me. Uh, and I gotta put up my screen blocker. I already showed that one. I already showed that one. Ah, here we go. 
Penny. You, I mean, confident, having confidence in your micro is one thing. Being able to pull it off in competitive play is another. And yeah, Regina, I agree with you. It relies on the Swordmasters not having their rears protected or being so far out of position. Yes, correct. Okay, I'm ready. Let's do this. And I'll put this in performance mode so I don't forget. There we go. I mean, defeat into tail is the only way you could really pull it off, yeah. Light units can put a, a put a unit out of place real quick. The speed differences between this game and Warhammer 2, you're, you're absolutely correct. Um, To me, though, it just it says a lot more about the, the Ark of Swordmasters. And I would say that, honestly, I would say that any any unit, if you if you have two units, and yes, if they're cheaper, like a 200-point difference, and you're just better micro, which is what that that test was demonstrating, if your micro is better, you're, you should win, even if you have a points disadvantage. Um, I, think th I think that's what should have happened in there. Uh, if I had been, you know, microwing my Ark of Swordmasters, you know, trying to put them into positions so they could use their javelins, charging the right unit right before they attack, things like that, um, I definitely think it would have gone differently. And I love the Laconian Hillmen, but, you know, they're also not that phenomenal themselves. Um, they're very vulnerable to missile fire, to chariots. Um, but those Ark of Swordmasters, there are days where they're great, and then there are days where they are just a 1,300-point waste. It, that's, that's really what it boils down to. There's no in-between there. All right, so I'm playing against Death uh, using his favorite faction. <laughs> Um, I've refused to bring chariots because the Amazon Champion chariots are spectacularly broken. Um, frustrate 500 troops? Uh-oh. That's not what I expected. Okay, my opponent has brought a tiny army, so I'm gonna play... I'm gonna play a little bit more defensive than I normally would. I don't have a lot of trees to deploy in. So I think my strategy is actually going to be to use this hill block line of sight. Yeah, yeah, that's my play. I'm going to try and just get my troops into this hill and then into the trees and then see what's going on. 500 troops. So he's got two chariots. Did he just bring all of his heavy Salamis inf infantry? Salamis has, like, giant men. He could be memeing. He could have just brought... I think he might have brought the two, um... The two, uh... The Salamis... I'm sorry, the... Ajax's companions and the two Ajax wall. So he's got, like, his four giant infantry units. And then he might have just brought giants. God, if he... Did he just bring nothing but giants? That... Those numbers... Those numbers work. And Death just says, By the way, I am just memeing this battle. Oh, God. Okay. <laughs> Good luck, have fun. <laughs> yes, Topher, you are correct. Death is memeing. So my horsewomen are not going to have a lot to do because everything in his army is anti-large. Oh, no! Oh, no. <laughs> Oh, this is going to be fun. So, I'm excited, guys. In just a few days, 
in just a few days, you all will be able to play Mythos, and you'll be able to play it with me. And I'm so stoked for that. Um, we, we've got... We, we're not just getting a meta shift in Truth Behind the Myth mode, which we all, you know, know very well. We're also getting two new metas. Historical mode is going to be... It's a completely different meta. Okay, here we go. Giant Spearmen, Devoted Forces. Yep. I'm getting giants. There's Ajax's wall. Oh, he did bring Salos Marines. Okay. He did bring... He did not bring nothing but giants and chariots. There's more than just giants and chariots. Oh my god. Okay, here we go. Nope, they're all anti-large. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. I don't want to be there. Kill Ajax's wall. God. Oh, he brought Unwavering Glaucos. Okay. I thought for sure it was just going to be an all-giant army. He's not seen my infantry. Yeah, he's seen my infantry. You know what? Freaking go. Let's just do this. Let's just go. Paulina, just kill as many of them as you can for me, please. Actually, kill Glaucos. Kill Glaucos. He's not giant troops. These are just men. We are but men! Oh, shoot. Well, it didn't kill as many, but it did do plenty of damage. Let's get... Yeah, chasing him off. That's right. That's right. Where are you going? Oh, towards your chariots. <laughs> towards your chariots. That's where you're going. Here we go. This will be interesting. Let's let Hippolyta keep shooting this up. Heavy... Infantry charge against chariots. Yeah, he changed his mind real quick. Horse women! Horse women! They're too slow. Not this time. Not this time, horse women. Alright, 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 alright. And I got my black spears protected. Sweet! Okay. Hey! That went pretty cool. Could have been worse. It could have been a lot worse. God, what am I going to do with all this anti-large here? <laughs> I can maybe get the Andromachoi out here, maybe? Let's just put the Black Spears out into the field and see what happens. Carving up Ajax's wall, Unwavering Glaucos... Okay, here we go. I gotta use my Aristomachoi and Andromachoi against the Reinforced Chariots. Is he going for it? I think he is. Ooh, he turned around one of his, uh, one of his Chariots, though. I'm gonna have to get in there with some of my horsewomen. Ah! Ah! No! No! Alright, you three. Oh, he got both of his chariots out there, too. Shoot! No! Your warriors are losing heart. Gee, you think? I just got meme rolled by those chariots. I did manage to protect two of my black spears. Let's get a bullet out of there, please.
I need the trees here to help me out against those chariots. He's going to turn him around, though, of course. Yep. Uh, Hippolyta, I gave you an order. Oh my god, he routed Hippolyta. Those reinforced chariots, I swear. <clears throat> I'm just gonna quick hit and run here, I think. Oh, I lost one of my Andromacoi. Great. supposed to be a quick hit and run, but it didn't. Oh, the stupid giants! I swear! Get them away from me! Apolda could... could help me turn this around. Alright. All right, I see what you're doing, Death. I'm tired of it. Did I get that guy yet? Nah, he's still active. Just gonna try and continue to outflank, outmaneuver. I have the speed, it's what I should be doing. I'm just gonna ignore those giant champions for a second. Ran all that over, reposition these ladies. Alright, get those horse ladies out of there. Cycle this out. Apollo's still out here doing just fine, shooting the backs of all these troops. Keep running away. I don't care about those giant champions. Down here. Black Spear is doing work. Thank you. Let's go after the giant champions, actually. Here, 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 here. Yeah, yeah. Hit that. There's so many spears here. So many spears, so many giants. But the giants are going to be mad when they're dealing with all of these black spears. Let's charge that armored spearman. Charge in here. Let's get my horsewomen out that are in. Oh, the giant champions did just fine against my black spears. Never mind. Never mind. Caesarius Thunder here. Oh, misused. Get those out. Are they back? Yeah, they're back. I'm gonna lose. Yeah, I lost. Boo! Death, that wasn't a meme. That was hardly a meme. If he wanted to meme, he could have brought more giants. I like how he says, I'm memeing, and then he brought, you know... Yeah, sure, he brought... Six different types of giants, but he still brought other troops and balanced it out. Meme my foot. That was not a meme. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, I'm going to take a quick break, and then I'm going to give you a sneak look at some uh, some some Troy update that's coming up, all right? Uh, just give me a second. Imagine if all... That was, that was not a meme. F you, lol. <laughs> It says, imagine Apollo losing to a meme build. Yeah, yeah, if if you had only brought a meme. <laughs> okay. Alright, alright. It'll be a quick BRB here. And I'll show you exactly what I mean. I just gotta up I gotta upload the other version of the game. But it wasn't a meme, Jace! <laughs>
Okay, the peasant man is back. All right, all right, all right. Let me clarify. If you're gonna play a meme army, you gotta go all in. You can't build half a meme and then and then balance it out with a decent with a decent supporting cast of units. All right. If you gotta go all giants, you need to bring Ajax. You need to bring two companions, two walls. You need to bring your champions, your two armor giant spearmen, and your devoted forces. And that's it. You bring only the giants. Only the giants. Uh, anyway. Um, so I'm showing you guys right now updated Troy. This is this is Troy that you guys are getting access to in, in three days. Um, and I could go into some, some maps here, but I kind of wanted to give... A look at uh, I'm putting the hood down I wanted to give you a look at what 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 can we expect from battles um, and the first big thing is that there's Troy is now three games they all look the same but they play very different oh he says he forgot about Ajax yeah there you go dad there you go um, so all the same maps are here as are in any game, right? Um, and I think some of these maps might only be available. Yeah. So, Mother's Sanctum, for instance, this is where you'd fight the uh, the Hydra in mythological mode. In Truth Behind the Myth mode, you don't actually have that map. So, the three new maps are specific to the mythological mode. But otherwise, the maps are all still the same. Some of them, though, got an update. Like, um, let's take a look here. This is the Wasteland... Um, Wasteland in Truth Behind the Myth and in mythological and historical mode, they all they all look they all have the same layout and they all affect the game the same exact way. What will be different is the way that the land is decorated. You're going to get a lot more mythological um, uh, flavoring all over the place. More shrines, giant um, ruined um, temples, fallen colossus. In, in the background, sea serpents in the water, things like that. It's 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 a flavor thing, really. But the gameplay themselves in all three modes drastically different. Um, I'm gonna start by let's just look at Mycenae. Mycenae is like the vanilla faction of this game when it, when it as as vanilla as they get anyway. This is um, Mycenae in Truth Behind the Myth mode, which we're familiar with. 1700 point Agamemnon. And you get a 1660 Minotaur and a 1200 Spartoi. And these are flavored to be like humans, but if they represented the myth. Um, yeah, Mudland's still there. We still have Mudlands. I'll show you. I do not know what mythological Mudlands looks like. And I now I'm very curious and I'm going to want to check that out. But anyway, that's, that's like the Mycenae. This is the roster we're used to. 
a Minotaur, Sparks away. In mythological Mycenae, Agamemnon is unchanged. He's still the same guy, but you can also purchase any of these um, any of these powers from any of these gods. The most significant of which being the 600 funds tidal wave ability that you get from from Poseidon. It's a one-time use ability, and you can only use it after you've been fighting for three minutes, and it's just wave, everybody gets knocked over. Um, down to, you know, the smallest influence would be Ares's um, bloodthirsty god ability. Boom, you pop it, you only get it once, but when you do, 75% melee attack, 20 morale, um, and, you, and you lose melee defense and armor. It's a, it's a huge thing. Uh, mythological, though, the whole playing field opens up. Um, you'll note, by the way, after I picked Bloodthirsty God, it gave an icon next to me here. You see which one of your, um, which god your opponent is worshipping if they choose to worship one when you're, when you're setting up. So, my opponent sees that I've picked Bloodthirsty God. I still get the Minotaur. The Minotaur is an 800, 1800 fund unit now. Very pricey. Um... And this is a mistake. It shouldn't be Cordovantes. I think they're going to update that when the game actually launches. Thank you for coming, Max. I'm glad you can make it. Um, the Mycenae should still be getting Spartoy here and not Cordovantes. Um, it just makes no sense. Uh, all of the factions that should have Cordovantes have Spartoy instead. They all got they all got flopped, flip flopped. All right, um, and that's that's definitely a mistake. Um, but I think that's just the mistake for the version I have. You also get access to either Cerberus units, Hydra units, or Griffin units. You cannot mix and match. If I decide I want to bring two Wretched Shades, it will show that I have a Cerberus roster to my opponent. And the very... And you'll note here, it's like an army can only have units from one monster group. Selecting units from this group will remove all of the units from the monster group you have currently selected in your army. So let's say I got all of this. There's, you know, I have 940 funds left. And I go, hey... You know what? Uh, Era Mass Poi Skirmisher will be good. Boom, they all get deleted. Simple as that. So you have to choose. You cannot choose to bring a Cerberus and a Hydra Defender and an Era Mass Poi Hunter. No, you only get one. One of these three trees of units. And these units, I think they are going to influence the way we play certain factions. Because you'll be able to see up here when when your opponent is um, and m my current favorite ma matchup here, you can see when when your opponent is playing Hippogriff, Hippolyta, Griffin, Hippogriff. You can see when your opponents are doing that, and I think I like doing Disarming Beauty. So you know when your opponent is playing Hippolyta with a Griffin and with um, uh, Aphrodite in support. You get all that information. Um, the other thing that's changed, and I go over this in great detail in one of my videos where I do like the mythical unit breakdown, is that um, centaurs are completely changed. Um, I can actually just allow all mythical units here real quick. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight centaur units now, rather than like the six we had, and they. They're not all directly analogous either. Some of them are totally different. So, new centaurs. Same deal with giants. We actually have giant skirmishers. Giants that have 12 javelins, which is awesome. Three days for Air Runner to break the game by looking at these units. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, but here's what I think is going to be the most um, telling as far as um, what I think the, might happen with the meta. The person who brings to a large funds battle a Griffin, a Cerberus, or a Hydra is the person that loses. Um, when you only have twelve hundred, tw I'm sorry, twelve thousand four hundred funds, having twenty five hundred points of your army, having a a fifth of your army be one of these three, is a lose button. For the same reason that in um, that in large funds battles that nobody brings the epic heroes really because that's that's a sixth of my my funds right there in one person one body he'll just get he'll just get axed it doesn't help 
Um, so I'm just gonna, you know, qu click through these. If people watch this back later and they want to see all of the, you know, the unit statistics, I'm just kind of going through them all. Um, and you could pause it. But of all of these units down here, the only ones that have impressed me so far are the uh, the Cerberus itself. I think the Giant Shades will be interesting. The Air to Mass Poi, all three of these down here. The Lesser Griffin might still be too expensive. Um, but I really love the Marksman of Elysium. And I don't like Skirmishers. But the Marksman of Elysium are... They, they are really good. I might like the Minotaur more than the Cyclops. Which is blasphemy coming from my mouth. I know, but... The Minotaur is... It is a hero killer and an epic creature killer. At like a 700 point difference, that Minotaur will 86 any one of these three. I, I'm almost positive. Which is so cool. Um, they can't be flanked in air though, can they? Uh, you mean the, the Griffins? Um, there's nothing in the air that should fight a Griffin. Uh, the only things that can are, are Harpies and Sirens. And Harpies and Sirens are... Not the same that they used to be. They are... They will die. They'll just straight up die. Let me look at um, Hippolyta real quick and show you what I mean. Here's the Sirens. Uh, their funds are 550. They do still have Sirens Lure. It just works as a Berserk rather than as a Taunt. And 5 armor. 4,000 hit points. They'll just die if they try fighting any Griffins. Okay, but what about the harpies? The harpies are supposed to be a melee unit now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. They should be. They should be just fine. Um, Three hundred for the normal version. Four hundred fifty for harpy fiends. Um, there's no javelins here. It's only melee. You can give them a, a speed boost, an armor piercing boost for a little bit of time for no melee defense, and they just roll on in there. But they will not beat Griffin. They will not beat a Griffin at all. At all. No survey. Um, now, last but not least to talk about, though, is historical mode. Let's go back to Mycenae. Remember Agamemnon? He doesn't cost 1700 anymore. He only costs 1000 And he comes with base, a shielded clubman hero unit. Or you can upgrade him to a reinforced chariot by making him cost 1450 Armored Swordsman for 1470, Agamemnon's Guards for 1630, or Agamemnon's Companions for 1650, and he still gets his abilities. Reinvigorate, Rallying Cry, Blood Sacrifice, Leader of Men. He himself is not a hit point sponge that, that stands there by himself. I know, Death, I said it. I think I think I like the Minotaur more than the Cyclops in, in Truth Behind the Myth mode. Um, also gone, the Mythical Roster. You do not get... Um, you do not get human-flavored Spartoi or Minotaur at all. Um, they just aren't there. So the meta has completely changed. Completely changed. How are you supposed... Like, for instance, how are you supposed to play... How are you supposed to play Sparta without Spartoi? How are you supposed to play Dardania without Centaurs? How are you supposed to play... Um, Ithaca without Cyclops and Sirens. All of that opens up, but at the same time, the hero is really just another unit. The hero is just another unit, and you get to pick what, what flavor of unit that is. Um, I would recommend, if you're playing as Agamemnon, to go for the Reinforced Chariot or the Agamemnon's Guards, personally. Um... And, you know, the, the reason why is right here. The Agamemnon's Guards are a great unit. Um, and Reinforced Chariots, I'm not so sure about, actually. Because they didn't just take units away to make the rosters more interesting. Which, it sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. And it really does make it more interesting. They've also changed the way mass works. Um, the Heavy Chariots will not just roll over your opponents like they do in Truth Behind the Myth mode. In historical mode, those chariots are a lot more fragile and a lot more prone to being stopped. Which is cool. That's really cool. This might be the most infantry-focused version of, of, of Troy that we've ever gotten. And Troy was already very infantry-focused. Um, skirmishers might be completely different. I haven't been able to, to really dig into that to find out. I've only been able to play against a couple people 
and the lessons that we've learned are hard to to validate because these are not people who play Troy regularly. These are like Warhammer dude bros. I'm sorry, I just called Air of Carthage and uh, and Linksy Warhammer dude bros. They're not. They're they're sweet, lovely people from very very strange corners of the world. That's <laughs> what they are. But they're experts in total war and. And the battles that we have fought and so, that we have fought in so far have just been really, really interesting. Um, and I cannot wait to see how the the historical meta goes in in multiplayer, the meta shift in in Truth Behind the Myth mode, and the Mythos mode throwdown that we're going to get. I I can tell you right now, if you go in to play multiplayer lobbies on day one and they're playing Mythos mode, be prepared. If you watch my contact my content be prepared to hand their butts to them on a platter because i've prepared you for the fact that the hydra the griffin and the cerberus are a waste of funds at 12,400. if and i'm probably going to advocate for this on my channel anyway if you're playing mythos mode set it to ultra funds allow yourself to have fun <laughs> allow yourself to have fun and actually bring the cool units you know do that you just saw the range of missiles in the last video i think that that um that Murbadon hail mary was a glitch i have no idea what to expect of that it was ridiculous we were cracking up when when it happened we were like oh my god those Murbadons. They just threw their javelins over the moon, and we're like, we're playing historical mode, right? It was hilarious. But yeah, guys, if you're playing Mythos mode, just do it on Ultra Funds. Allow everybody to have fun with it. Um, I'm still saying for uh, Truth Behind the Myth mode, large funds, ultra unit sizes is where it's at. It's definitely, definitely where it's at. Um, and historical mode, I have no idea. I have no idea. It's going to be so cool. I'm, I'm curious. Let's just take a quick look here. Club Warriors, a unit we know well. 25 armor, 2 javelins, 75 range, 40 damage. Okay, okay. Let those numbers sink in for a bit. 10,800. Okay. And I'm going to quickly go Truth Behind the Myth mode. 25, 10,800, 2 javelins, 40 damage. They're not different, but they play different. Do you know what I mean? Do you know what I'm trying to say? They're the same unit, but they don't play the same because because mass is different now. All right, they didn't change any of the statistics. They didn't change any of the statistics that we can see. They changed it in the back end, and I can't wait to to play more. I really, really can't. It's gonna be fascinating. Anyway, that's gonna be it for me today. Right. Oh wait, 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 Mudlands. Mudlands. Let's just, uh, here, you know, um, make sure we're on mythological mode. Mudlands, good. We're gonna do a couple auto-generated armies and just let them throw down. So let's boom. Let's boom. Okay. Uh, oh yeah, ultra. There we go. Plus ultra. There it is. Awesome. No, I, I need, uh, I need, uh, some kind of mythological here. Give me a big and... I'll take Cordvantes, why not? Okay. Let's just let's just check this out. Let's we'll see what it looks like. And then we'll be done today. After that, that's it. Um This is gonna be fun. Oh my goodness! Man, they spruced this up a lot. Oh, wow. I love this shrine that they've built here. These ruined shrines. This is, this is like, this is straight out of Shadow of the Colossus. Isn't it? Look at this. Speaking of Colossi, let's get a closer look at this dude. I've got the debug camera working for me right now, finally. Yeah. 
fascinating. Uh, let's get back over to the Mudlands real quick. <laughs> yeah, WoW is right, isn't it? They, uh, I wasn't expecting this huge centerpiece just right off the side of the battle map. But, but they did. That's really cool. The other direction doesn't look like there's much going on. There's another Colossi over there with looks like a, a javelin sticking out of its eye. There's another one off in the distance there. But then there's also there's also smaller changes too, like down here. Check this out. We have um, on top of this little rocky outcropping here, they've built a shrine to the Sphinx. Yeah, it's the Sphinx up there. You know, much smaller scale. Um, there's another little feature over here. What's this? Just kind of a, a, you know, a couple of, um, monoliths. And I thought I saw, oh yeah, over here, I think this is a, 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 a carved Cerberus. Yeah, they just turned this mountain into a Cerberus. Oh, so cool. So cool. So, like, yeah. And, and the thing is, Regina, this is, this is a map that we've already, you know, you either love it or you hate it. It's just mud. The whole, like, stretch of it is mud. And this map is in Truth Behind the Myth mode and Historical mode. And really, it's just, the only thing that's different is that the, the, the horizon is different. You know, the, these features in the background, they're not there anymore. Um, but the battle, the play space itself... Um, is mostly unchanged. In some of these battle maps, the, the play spaces are changed where, like, they'll add... Like, for instance, instead of it just being, like, this hole in the ground here, there'd be, like, you know, a small waterfall and, you know, a couple of urns burning, you know? They, they've, they've really spruced up the place and we got pigs. There we go. There we go. There's a wild boar for you. Good boar. Anyway, let's just, uh... Let's just go ahead and hard group this, give it an attack order, and let the AIs uh, tango against each other for a bit. He's brought the Griffin. This is, honestly, this is the prettiest Total War game they've ever made. It really is. I love the lens flare. Oh, gosh, and you want to know what else is really cool. You guys are going to... It's, this is going to blow your mind. Watch this. I got to... I actually have to wait until... Like, I got a little pop-up that's blocking my ability to, to see stuff here. Okay. Um, so this is photo mode. This is how I make my, my thumbnails and everything. And you could do stuff like... Oh, put on that teal and orange filter. Oh, that's cool. Neat, huh? Um, and I can add some film grain. You know, stuff like that. If I really wanted to. I could change it so that my focus distance is is kind of specific or what, you know. This is how I make my screenshots. Um, I can add some fog. Let's see, where is that fog density? Boom. Super thick? Nah. We're going to turn it down to like here. We're going to turn off that film grain because it bothers me a lot. And let's go with, um, let's go with Noir and Blood. There we go. And Persist in Battle. Look at this, guys! <laughs> you can set the photo mode options to persist in the freaking battle. Let's uh, let's clear it up so you can see it even better. I'm going to turn off that, that fog. That means we have complete control over the fog density now, right? But, um... Like... This is, this is Noir and Blood, um... Filter. So it's very much black and white, and then you're gonna see, um, you're going to see all reds. You see, like, little splashes of blood here. Let's check out the, uh, the griffin. Oh, you gonna land? Yeah, he is. You can already see blood littering the ground. Yeah, I know, Jace. This is so cool. I'm so glad they've added this feature because it means that we can do some really unique challenges in this game. We can actually have fog battles where we don't have ridiculous um, morale penalties. Um, 
we can we can add mystery and myth to all of our maps. Um, the maps that have like streams of water flowing through them, the noir and blood, it's gonna really pop that blood when that blood starts like flowing no down the um, down the uh, the the rivers. The chariots themselves, they will start leaving bloody streaks here. Yeah, here we go. There was a little bit there. Yeah. You can see like these bloody tire streaks that are that are dragged behind these uh behind these chariots. And I'm just gonna let's let's I'm gonna pick another filter here real quick. Let's try the desert filter. And just immediately, like the saturation's really low, but it it just it changes the whole character of what you're watching. Welcome to the Mudlands. Let's quickly take a look at how the battle's going. We're just gonna give new attack orders, boom. By Ares, your warriors are rallying. Apparently my troops are, are, you know, they're coming back into it. And there's the Court of Antis at work. Look at them. Look at them. They're such good boys. <laughs> Over here is a routing centaur unit. They're just they're just sausages. They really are. They look like sausages to me. Especially on rain maps, they glisten and they just look like wet sausage bodies. Me watching blood splatter appear. So pretty. You'd like total war. <laughs> Archer chariots. Shameful. Shameful. Uh, tilt that camera up. Look, and that would be a screenshot quality shot right there, you know? Where's the griffin? What's the griffin up to? I haven't seen it in a bit. Oh, it's chasing my hero. <laughs> He's the goodest of boys. Oh, and um, Regina, you'll appreciate this feature. You can actually order your flying units to land. That's a thing you can do. You can land your flying units. Let's see what uh, uh what else can I show you with this? How about something very different? The midnight filter works really well on on uh, on nighttime maps, but when you get really up close and personal with it, like that is a moonlit map, you know. Another good filter that I often use for um, for screenshots is teal and orange. And then I tend to bring the saturation down just a pinch, bring up the contrast. And this makes for some really fantastic... Like, actually, here, let me show you my screenshot making process. Um, I'll play with the lighting some so I can get a little bit more shadow, bring down that skylight intensity. And then I basically just, I pick a point that I want to focus on. We'll say it's this Court of Antis right here. Um, I bring the, the frame stop all the way down, the focus stop, and then I find where it's focused on him. And right now it is. Um, maybe I go up to two. Two looks good. I'll leave it there. Then I put in the fog density in the background, soften up the background some more. Boom. And then I hit that space bar. There's our screenshot. Um, and I can browse my saved photos here as well. Uh, and then... Oh, the other thing I do, logo, bottom left, boom, future screenshot material right there. And then you just let it persist in battle. And what will be really goofy about this is the the focus distance. But thankfully the, the shadows are actually making it very hard to, to tell. Because the focus distance is actually maintaining, or it should. It doesn't seem to be. Oh, the griffin in the background. Oh, God, that was so cool. Let's see what he's going to snack on. Oh, no, he's leaving. Oh, he's going to flap his wings and just send everybody flying. I love this game, guys. We're going to have so much fun with this. Just, 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 just look at it. Just 
to look at it. You know? Point of view, you're a centaur corpse on the mudlands. And there's that beautiful, like, shrine that we saw earlier. The, the lighting effects are gorgeous. And that, if that doesn't look freaking real, you know? I mean, it's just, it's so cool. It, I, I'm so happy that we get this persistent battle feature. And this is proving to be the prettiest Total War game that Creative Assembly has ever made. Creative Assembly, Sophia, hats off to you, man. This is, this is really, really good stuff. Really good stuff. And I'm, I'm proud of myself because I stuck with this game ever since its launch because I have a huge love of Greek myth. And um, I, I, because of you all, the community, I've been rewarded. Um, I got access to this Mythos content a month ago, and I've been able to play it and bring it to you and show it to you way ahead of schedule for anybody else at my level of, a, of channel. So this has just been a remarkable month. Um, and, you know, things are also turning around in my personal life as well. Just being able to see people, hang out with people, make new friends like Jace. Um, it's just been fantastic. I've been having a great time these last couple of months. So you might have seen less content from me. That's just because so much is going on right now. But things are going great. And I like where my channel is at right now. And I don't feel pressured to grow it anymore. Because this journey has been about Troy. And I think the Troy journey, it either ends in a few days with uh, the Mythos release and the Steam release or it takes off from there and no matter what I'll be there I'll be there along for the ride okay I don't think we're going to be getting very much Troy content until after um, until after this next marketing window which is going to be geared towards uh, Warhammer 3 so we may be in after, after Mythos comes out we may have like a six month drought before we actually see any major content for Troy. Which is about where we were between then and now. Between the last update and this. We could be. I'm preparing people for it now. But frankly, we're going to have a lot to talk about for the next couple of months anyway with just, just Mythos. And for everybody out there who says that this is just reskinned Warhammer, I dare you to say that to my face. Because it is not the same game, guys. It is not. It really isn't. Anyway, that's it for me today. Alright? I'm going to go ahead and end the stream there. Ta-ta, everybody. I love you all. And I am going to see you guys in my next stream. Which will probably be my 1,000 subscriber stream. And... I, I might have plans this weekend. If I don't, I'm going to do the 1,000 subscriber stream next week on the weekend. And it's going to be epic. It's going to be long. I'm going to play highlights from my entire YouTube experience. Banner Saga guaranteed. Um, maybe even some Ace Combat. Um, definitely Troy. There's going to be lots of stuff to do. Lots of stuff to talk about. All right? Anyway, um, if you want to support the channel, check out my Ko-Fi. Ko dash fi dot com slash appius ko dash fi yeah or you can just you know super chat that works for me too all right that's it for me everybody ta ta i love you all and i'll see you guys in the next stream